So this is called a disubstituted amide because now as you can see two of the hydrogens have been replaced in ammonia. Uh, one is replaced by a CH3CH2CO group and the other is replaced by an ethyl group. So this is a disubstituted amide. So when we are naming this first we write N ethyl because to the nitrogen atom we have attached an ethyl group ethyl and then we write propanamide because we have three carbons over here uh, which is uh, uh, for the uh, CSC, CH2CO it's three carbons so propanamide so the naming of uh, disubstituted amide is done as this N ethyl propanamide because uh, it, an ethyl group is attached to the nitrogen atom so we write N ethyl to show that the N atom is attached to an ethyl group and propanamide so I just I don't know what gibberish I've written over here so let me just uh, let me just correct it I'm sorry my handwriting sucks I know that but deal with it propanamide so this is what uh, the, uh, how to how we named I substituted uh, amides so it's really not a pain to name mono substituted amides because it's just uh, we just take these three and propanamide done and uh, but when it's di substituted then we have two different chains <coughs> <coughs> sorry for that um, so if we instead of this if we had CH3 C O N H C H two C H two C H two C H three. So, if we are to name this amide, uh, we uh, so first we'll see N. We'll write N nitrogen atom. This is attached to a butyl group, which is C H three because four. So butyl, so it will be butyl and then these are two, so ethanamide because two means eth, so ethanamide. So that, that is how the naming of disubstituted amides is done and uh, the, this group, uh, let me use a different color to mark it to make it easier for you. This group which I have marked in dotted lines is called the amide group, the amide link. It's the functional group of this molecule, of these molecules, and it's called the amide group, okay? So, here, here it is, this, the amide group. Now, um, if we had, so let's just erase all of this, and uh, there's one more thing we have to, we, are still, we still need to do under amides. So, we have an amide, okay? So, let's take propanamide again. We have been using it since quite a long time, so let's just use it for this one last time. And uh, we have propanamide, and I'm just making the amide group dis displayed because it's important when we is to know what is going on. So this point says that amides are neutral. What does this mean? That they are neither acidic nor alkaline. And why is this? Now you will ask me that we have an NH2 so NH2 that means it can accept a proton so why isn't it basic it has to be basic but the thing is that we also have an oxygen over here which is elect highly electronegative as well so what happens is that this oxygen it uh, it retracts electrons from this carbon so this carbon is forced to so this oxygen tries to pull electrons from, for, from this carbon and therefore this carbon is forced to pull electrons from this nitrogen so the availability of the lone pair on the nitrogen to accept protons is very 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 less because the oxygen has already pulled electrons from the carbon so the carbon is forced to pull electrons from the nitrogen so since it is pulling electrons from the nitrogen these electrons are less available or very slightly like minutely available to accept protons and therefore amides are neutral compounds I hope you understand this so I've explained why amides are neutral so now we can move forward formation of amides okay so there are uh, certain ways in which amides can be formed now um, for substituted amides which are mono substituted amides like propanamide uh, we react acyl chlorides with ammonia so for example if I have to form a substituted amide with two carbon atoms 
So I will take the two carbon atom derivative of an acyl uh, or of a, I will take the two